Swords. For a long time, these weapons have been used for really only two things in the world of Destiny. Speedrunning PvE events, F's in the chat on that one boys, and third person peeking around corners in PvP. Fun times. Somewhat recently though, swords received a big buff to the point where they're actually viable now, mainly in PvE. In PvP, they still have a long way to go. It's hard to reenact your favorite outer space D&D paladin fantasy when enemies are constantly running around with shotguns and one-hit kill abilities, not to mention the competition from other options that kinda do the job cleaner, i.e. rocket and nade launchers. In PvE, you can carve through the biggest and baddest of enemies quite literally, like a hot knife through lukewarm butter, and it's been pretty fun finally equipping swords without it being a meme. It's come to my attention though that because swords were an underused weapon type for so long, now that they're thrust back into the spotlight and with slightly updated mechanics, not a lot of people know how to use them. So we're gonna do a deep dive on the weapon type together. That way each and every one of you will earn your honorary sheepskin for graduating Swords 101. Quick heads up, today's vid is gonna be a long one y'all, but we're in this together. I believe we can get through to the end. But first, you know I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. Manscaped. Fellas, your swords in Destiny should be sharp, and so should your grooming equipment. You wouldn't bring a rusty blade to a boss fight, would you? So why would you take a dull, weak blade to your own god-given heavy weapon? Hook yourself up with Manscaped and their Perfect Package 3.0 kit. Manscaped created the world's first manscaping kit that makes manscaping safe and easy. Their electric clippers are USB chargeable and also waterproof, meaning if you want, you can use it right in the shower. The 3.0 kit also comes with cologne, hair and body wash, even ball toner. Giggle all you want, but I doubt a lot of SOs on the planet would be thrilled to handle an unpolished and dirty sword if you catch my drift. Shape up, boys, and get 20% off and free shipping from your Perfect Package 3.0 kit when you use promo code FALLOUT at manscaped.com. That's promo code FALLOUT at manscaped.com. And thanks again to the awesome people at Manscaped for sponsoring today's video. All right, swords, what do we got to go over? How about we start with the basics? Swords are power weapons and you use them, shocker, by swinging them around. There are two different ways to swing your sword. You've got a light swing and a heavy swing, each being achieved by hitting a different button. Check your current button layout to find out which is your current light swing and which is your current heavy. As you might imagine, light swings do lighter damage but are fast and easy to spam repeatedly and heavy swings hit noticeably harder harder but have longer swing animations. You can swing your sword while in the air, both with a light or heavy attack, although you can't chain together swings in the air like you can on the ground. And with almost every sword, landing a heavy swing in the air is going to translate to less damage. New players, you might hope that because swords are swung, you can swing your blade willy-nilly until the cows come home. Not so. Swords, believe it or not, require ammo because reasons, and every swing you take will deplete your overall sword ammo count regardless of if you hit a target or not. Light attacks take one sword ammo per swing, and heavy attacks usually take about four sword ammo with each swing if you are at full charge. Huh? Full charge? What's that mean? Take a look down here. When you've equipped a sword, you will conveniently notice that your melee ability is no longer there and you now have a picture of a sword. That is your sword's energy meter, a key mechanic of how swords work is that you can use them to guard against incoming damage. I usually hear people refer to this mechanic as blocking, but I don't like that word because block implies taking no damage, and if you get hit while guarding, you will take damage, but at a reduced amount. It is important to note that your sword energy meter is different than your sword ammo. Guarding will only take away from your energy meter, not your ammo count. The only thing that is gonna take away your ammo count is swipe that sword. Now because guarding forever with every sword in the game would be kind of corny, you're only able to guard incoming damage until your charge meter has been completely depleted. The longer you hold the guard animation, the more
more your sword energy meter is going to go down. Aside from guarding, your energy meter is also tied to heavy attacks. Remember earlier I said usually heavy swings take away 4 ammo per attack? That's provided you're at full energy. If you perform a heavy attack and your energy meter is not full, your heavy swing will do noticeably less damage, but to compensate, you'll only spend 1 ammo as opposed to 4. Heavy attacks also chip away at your energy meter just like guarding does. I'm guessing that was put in the game to prevent folks from repeatedly spamming heavy attacks nonstop or to prevent going from a guard immediately into a full heavy attack which IMO would be pretty cool. The takeaway is that if you want your heavy attack to always do maximum damage, make sure you're only performing your heavy attack when your energy meter is completely full. We're not done covering the energy meter just yet, but before we cross that bridge into the land of defense, let's talk about types of swords. Believe it or not, there's actually only three main archetypes of sword, lightweight frames, adaptive frames, and aggressive frames. I like to think of them as light, medium, heavy, but I'll make sure to keep using the correct frame names when I can to avoid too much confusion. Almost every sword in the game is an adaptive frame, aka the medium variety. Fun fact, these are the only swords usable by the Warlock class. Reason being is that the other two varieties, both lightweight and aggressive frames, are class specific. Lightweight frame swords are usable by Hunter only, and there are only two in the game, the Quick Fang and the Gold Tusk and aggressive frames are usable by Titan only, with just two in the game, the Crown Splitter and the Throne Cleaver. If you couldn't tell by now, swords have very badass names. But if you're thinking, hey, that's not fair, what about Warlocks? Well, they have class-specific swords too, both the Eternity's Edge and Death's Razor, although both of those are adaptive frames, aka the medium variety. Are there any major differences between frames? Yes, let's go through each, starting with what might be objectively the best, the lightweight frame option. Good news, hunters, lightweight frame swords, unsurprisingly, have the highest possible swing speed at 82. Their light attack is a quick little swing, and their heavy attack is a twisting forward lunge. Remember earlier how I said most heavy swings on swords take away 4 ammo? Well, heavy attacks on lightweight frames only take away 3. Heavy attacks in the air with a lightweight frame will only take away 2 ammo, but like I mentioned earlier, heavy attacks in the air translate to less overall damage. So yeah, faster swing speed and better ammo economy on heavy swings, you'd probably assume that because lightweight frames are so snappy and quick, they'd be given much lower damage to compensate, but oddly enough, you'd be wrong. Well, kinda. The two lightweight frame swords in the game both come with 60 impact, which is the base default across all adaptive frames, aka medium swords. If you're thinking, well, that's a bunch of goddamn hogwash, because if they're faster, the lightweight swords should be weaker. Well, they do a bit less damage in the heavy attack department. A lightweight and adaptive frame sword both deliver the same damage with a light attack, but with a heavy attack, the adaptive frame at full charge charge does hit harder. If you're wondering why the damage numbers look weird right now, it's because a full charge heavy attack on an adaptive sword, by design, delivers one base damage number, then four smaller hit numbers. Why it was done that way, I have no idea, but it's an extra headache for me, so that's always fun. In PvP, by the way, something I haven't talked a whole lot about yet, it almost doesn't matter because even a heavy attack from a lightweight frame sword hits ridiculously hard. Can it flat out kill a regular guardian? Of course, so does a light swing. Can a heavy attack kill a guardian in their roaming super? It sure can, but wait! there's more. A heavy attack can one-shot a full health sentinel titan camping out in their Ward of Dawn super. Good god, that's sharp. Let's add more fuel to the hunter fire. Lightweight frame swords give your guardian faster movement speed, so any hunter with a quick fang or gold tusk will run just a little bit faster than they would normally. You also look cool as hell while running with a lightweight frame. That's not an opinion, that's science. Due to everything I've touched on so far, lightweight frame swords are pretty much the best overall option for crucible usage if you're a crazy person and like to cut people in PvP. On the other end of the spectrum, we got aggressive frame swords, what I call heavies. And again, they're only usable by titans. As you can imagine, they hit harder, but you swing them way slower. Think of 
of Gohan swinging around the Z sword. Don't know what that means? Well, that's no problem. Just kindly excuse yourself from my channel and wash the doorknob on your way out. Throne Cleaver, for example, has a swing speed of 10 and an impact of 73. Just for comparison, the Honor's Edge, an adaptive frame I've had drop a lot in Season 10, has a swing speed default of 46 and an impact of 60. Aggressive frames are slow, but heavy. The light attack on an ag frame is about as fast as an adaptive frame heavy attack. You can still chain light swings together over and over, but it does seem a bit slower. The aggressive frame heavy attack is awesome though. Slow to execute, but you do a leaping ground pound. Oddly, like the lightweight frame option, this heavy attack only takes three ammo on a full charge. Cool. Remember when I told you that heavy attacks when executed in the air usually do less damage? Yeah, well Titans didn't get that memo, so when they drop the hammer with their heavy attack, even from mid-air, you'll always do full damage. In PvP, the Titan Swords hit so hard that a light swing on its own is enough to one-shot an enemy out of their roaming super. Here's me running through my friend in a private lobby with a light attack. 217 damage, by the way. That means no matter how much resilience they might have, they're going down. Same thing against a Spectral Blade Hunter, if you were curious, which is slightly beefier in terms of damage resistance. One hit and down they go. Both the lightweight frame and the adaptive frames are capable of taking out roaming supers, but you have to use a heavy attack, not a light. Either way, if you're looking to take out a super, heavy attacks are probably your best bet straight up, even with the big bad aggressive frame sword, mainly because you can close the gap faster with a ground pound. Can you one shot a titan out of their ward of dawn? I mean, the lightweight frame sword can, so obviously the aggressive frame can too, provided you use the ground pound. So we have our two heavy swords, our two lightweight swords. Let's talk about every other sword you can get your hands on, adaptive frames. Their heavy attack is a lunging uppercut, which as I mentioned earlier, has multiple damage numbers when you hit with full charge. Landing a heavy attack without full charge just results in one plain old damage number. Gross. Unlike lightweight and aggressive frame swords, a heavy attack from an adaptive frame blade takes four ammo rather than three, which is total BS if you're asking me. Back to important sword mechanics, let's talk about the four remaining stats on swords that I haven't talked about yet. They are guard efficiency, guard resistance, guard endurance, and charge time. The easiest of the four being charge time. Holding guard and heavy attacking will deplete your overall sword energy level and how fast it replenishes is determined by your charge stat. Not how fast it goes away, but how fast it comes back. I'm not gonna lie to you boys, in terms of searching for a quote god roll sword, charge might be the go-to throwaway stat. Comparing a sword with a fast charge time, the hunter gold tusk, along with a sword with bad charge time, the knight terror, which I purposefully tanked the charge time down via the perk heavy guard, the difference in recharge rate was minor. Very minor. The gold tusk finished charging, then under one second later, the Night Terror finished charging. I mean, if you have a sword with good charge time, well, yay, good for you. But if yours is low, eh. I mean, it doesn't matter that much at all. Next defense related stat I wanna talk about is guard endurance. Guard endurance is how slowly your charge meter goes down as you're guarding. Easy, right? If you have a very low guard endurance, you can only hold your guard animation for a short time. And if you have a very high guard endurance, you can hold your guard animation for a long time. In fact, a few swords, three of them actually, come with a perk called Infinite Guard. It only drops on the two unique Warlock swords and the Worldline Zero Exotic. The perk does exactly what you think it does. It maximizes your guard endurance bar, meaning you can literally hold guard forever, provided no one is shooting you. Whoa, you gotta be kidding me with that fallout. That's OP, you can block forever. Ah, remember, guarding is not blocking. Yeah, you can hold the guard animation forever with the perk Infinite Guard, but taking incoming damage both reduces your charge meter with every hit and damages your guardian. Again, guard endurance in your mind should just translate to how long I can hold the guard animation before it runs out. Unlike charge, endurance seems to be a pretty hot stat. When comparing two swords with low and high endurance, the low endurance sword ran out of charge way faster than the high endurance. Oh, well, wait a minute, I'm confused. If that's what endurance does, then what the hell is efficiency? 
Good question. Every time you get shot while guarding, your sword energy falls down a little quicker than it would if you were just guarding uncontested. Efficiency determines how hard your sword energy depletes while you're getting shot. Do you get it? Endurance is how long you can hold it normally on its own. Efficiency is how much faster it tanks when you're actually taking damage. Let's take your guardian's health completely out of the equation and show you a pure comparison on low efficiency versus high efficiency. I will do this by standing in a warlock well of radiance and letting my friend shoot the crap out of me while I'm guarding. The low efficiency sword breaks almost comically quickly compared to the high efficiency sword. You should also notice that when my guard animation is broken on the low efficiency sword, my guardian stumbles back in shock. Yeah, that's what happens if you ever get broken out of your guard. There is a big recovery animation. If this happens to you in PvP, you will will 100% get killed by your enemy, so try to avoid that if possible. Now efficiency is looking pretty hot on swords, but hold on, we're not done yet. The final piece of the defense puzzle is guard resilience. So you know how guarding isn't blocking because blocking implies all damage gets shrugged off and guarding is simply taking less damage than you would normally? Guard resilience determines exactly how much damage you're taking health-wise per hit while in your guard animation. If you have very high guard resilience, your guardian would take very little damage per bullet while guarding. For this one, I got some numbers for you. Two swords, one with a high guard resistance of 76, the other with a lower guard resistance of 54. All my testing here was done in PvP because Hive and Fallen are very bad at telling me how much damage I was taking per shot. They are very impolite. I used common PvP weapons, and as you can see, the low guard resistance sword was taking noticeably more damage per shot. I can already imagine the question I'm probably going to get the most about swords, which is, hey, out of all the guarding stats, which one is the best? Really hard to answer. I mean, in a perfect world, you'd obviously want all of them to be maxed out as high as possible. But Bungie, God love them, usually makes you pick raising one will lower the other. You know the deal. I'd have to think that for PvE, the answer would be efficiency and endurance as top tier, depending on what act activity you're doing. PvE enemies are dumb, and on their own, usually take very long to kill you, even if you're standing still. Like right here, look at how long this Vex is taking to kill me, and I'm not even fighting back. <laughs> what, what a dumbass. So because that's the case, again, I think efficiency and endurance are probably what you want for PvE. For PvP, might I recommend a rocket launcher? <laughs> but no, really, I still think efficiency might be the way to go, followed closely by guard resilience. Reason for efficiency, again, remember how quickly my sword energy broke when I had low efficiency? And the stun animation, dear god, if you ever get stunned like that in a game of PvP, you will get mollywopped, that's a fact. Because PvP combat is usually faster than PvE combat, your objective with a sword should be as follows. Get real close to the enemy very quickly, tank what they attempt to throw at you and kill them fast without getting your guard broken. Efficiency and resilience don't worry so much about either endurance or charge. All right, how's everyone doing so far? Good? I told you, man, it's a long video. That is what happens when Bungie makes a huge game update to a weapon class I've literally almost never covered before. We're getting to the end, bear with me. Now we're going to talk about sword perks, which there are a few, but nowhere near as many as there are gun perks. And thank God for that, boy. And with that, here we we go. On guard, swapping to your sword does more light attack damage. This perk is very fun to say, but in my opinion, very overrated. Seems good on paper though, right? Well, who would say no to more damage output? Me. That's who. 
I'll explain. In PvP, a light attack already has enough damage to kill an enemy guardian. Well, what about a roaming super? You can already one-hit kill them with a heavy attack. But what if you had low ammo? You can still use a full power heavy attack even if you just have one ammo on your sword. Ah, but Fallout, what about PvE? Okay, fair. On guard does 30% extra damage, and that could come in handy in PvE. But the duration is only 1.5 seconds. You heard me, 1.5 seconds. That's so annoyingly short. Enough for just a really quick whack, then damage go bye-bye. I mean, yeah, it's easy to activate, but uh, eh. Let's keep going with our extra damage options though and talk about Assassin's Blade. Sword kills boost damage and movement speed for a short time. This one is very straightforward. Get a sword kill and you're looking at a plus 15% extra damage for five seconds. Not bad. Yeah, it's not as strong as on guards 30%, but five seconds is hell of a lot longer than 1.5, not to mention the damage buff applies to heavy swings too, which can be fun for PvE. For PvP, the perk can be good, not so much for the extra damage though, but more so for the extra movement speed. If you're trying to carve up an enemy team, getting to your next target a hair faster could mean the difference between you living and dying. We still haven't found our whole Holy grail of damage though. How about Shattering Blade? I only have one sword that has that perk, and I'll be honest, it was acting kinda weird when I tested it. I'll spare you the details, but I believe Shattering Blade gives a plus 25% damage buff if you manage to deplete your sword ammo while using a heavy attack. Gotta tell ya, this perk ain't cutting it, Pun intended. Extra damage is great, but what's the point if you can only use it once, especially at the end of your ammo barrel? Not to mention, we tried testing this perk in PvP and Shattering Blade straight up did not work at all. What the F, Bungie? If anyone out there has any additional insight on Shattering Blade, I would love to hear it, but right now, definitely not feeling this perk. What about Surrounded? Extra damage if three or more enemies are in close proximity. I feel like I shouldn't need to say this, there aren't going to be a ton of times in PvP where you're going to have this perk activated at all. If three people are close enough to you to where this perk does get activated, you're probably about to get gang shotgunned. Either way though, we've covered that you don't really need the extra damage in PvP, so let's consider PvE, which is what Surrounded was likely designed for. The extra damage ain't bad, plus 25%, and considering it's very easy to get mobbed by low-level trash in PvE, I give Surrounded a thumbs up. If you equip your sword with a Surrounded spec mod, the damage buff jumps up from 25 to 36%, and it also lets your bonus damage linger for a few seconds once you're no longer surrounded. If your sword has Surrounded and you want to use it in PvE, definitely use the Surrounded spec mod. Can we do better though? Oh, sweet child, please allow me to introduce you to the premier damage dealing perk for PvE, and that is Whirlwind Blade. Rapid sword strikes increase this weapon's damage output for a short duration. The words short duration really should have an asterisk next to them. Let me tell you, if the perk on guard has a poster hanging on its bedroom wall, it would be of Whirlwind Blade. Whirlwind takes a touch of effort to get fully ramped up, but barely. All you gotta do is land hits. There are five levels of Whirlwind, each of them providing about a 6% damage buff, so you have to whack at enemies repeatedly to get up to the full damage buff of 30%. But once you're up there, you can keep that damage buff going for as long as you're whacking away at any enemy. If you were to miss a swing, that's okay, because you have a 3.5 second window to land another whack, and guess what? When you do, you've just extended the Whirlwind timer. This perk is pretty much, eh, who cares for PvP, but again, you're looking for PvE damage output, Whirlwind Blade is unquestionably fire. Run into a room, spam light attack, ramp up epic damage, profit. Here's three perks all under one umbrella that encourage guarding with your blade. Flash counter, counter attack, and energy transfer. Starting with energy transfer. Guarding and receiving damage generates class ability energy. Very straightforward, works great, and I don't care for it at all. It's nice to have, but it doesn't really enhance my destructibility. I'm sure you could come up with fun builds to max hunter dodging or something, but outside of that niche window, eh, 
whatever. Counter attack. Blocking an attack immediately after guarding increases damage for a short duration. How much extra damage? A whopping 50% more, which is great. Sure, that damage isn't going to last as long as Whirlwind Blade, though, but still, it's an easy enough perk to activate. The only catch is that you have to take damage right as you activate guard. You can't just waltz into a room while guarding and then take damage seconds later. The buff will not trigger. You gotta time the guard right when you know you're about to be damaged. Overall, though, not a bad perk. And that brings me to Counter-Attack's much hotter sibling, Flash Counter. This perk is underrated. It functions the same way as Counter-Attack. If you activate guard and take damage right away, the perk kicks in. But unlike Counter-Attack, which gives your sword a damage buff, Flash Counter debuffs the enemy that attacked you. Why is that such an important distinction? Because if you're trying to burn through a PvE activity with your buddies and all of you have swords, you can liquefy a boss that much easier if just one of you has flash counter. Remember, it's a debuff, meaning that enemy you just hit with flash counter is now weak to not just you, but your bros too. And on top of that, not only is the enemy now weak, it's not just to your sword, but all incoming damage. The target takes an extra 20% from everything. So in theory, if you had a sword and your two buddies had the fourth horseman, you could debuff the target attacking you with flash counter and holy lord, that target is gonna get annihilated. The debuff duration is five seconds and it's very easy to reactivate. The only catch with this perk is that you have to counter physical damage, i.e. an incoming melee. Good news though, you know who loves to melee? Almost every ground pounding jackass boss in this goddamn game. Flash counter is the ultimate FU to the ground pound mechanic. So yes, definitely have a sword with Whirlwind Blade. It is top tier for PvE, but so is Flash Counter without question. Bad news though, boys, it only drops on one sword in the game, and that is Honor's Edge. Hope your RNG is good. Finally, we have two perks that fall under the umbrella of Ammo Regeneration, Relentless Strikes and Tireless Blade. Tireless Blade gives you sword ammo back for every other powered sword kill, aka heavy attack. Yeah, that's all well and good, but you only get one ammo back, meaning you're burning through a lot of ammo to get very little back. Not terribly efficient, if you ask me. Relentless Strikes, on the other hand, now that is what I'm talking about. The text reads, landing three light attack hits within a short time grants sword ammo. Oh, indeed it does, my friend. But not only that, I'm probably either late to the party on this or about to tell you something you don't know. Relentless Strikes seems to be bugged right now, but in a good way. I went into the tribute hall to test it, seems that it actually gives you back one ammo for only two quick hits in a row, not three. That's even better. Hmm, getting sword ammo back for hitting an enemy repeatedly. Is there some other perk that would pair well with mindlessly swinging away at a target forever? Oh yeah, that's right, our lord and savior, Whirlwind Blade. These two perks were meant to be together. Peanut butter and jelly, you've got nothing on Relentless Strikes and Whirlwind Blade. With these two perks together, you can walk up to a boss, begin spamming light attacks, and two things are gonna happen. One, you ramp up your damage with every hit almost immediately to plus 30 damage, and two, you get sword ammo back with every third hit, or god help them, with every two, and that boss is gonna be crying in no time. Well, that pretty much covers every unique perk on the table in the land of sorting. Of course, there are a ton of column one and column two perks that affect your major stats, enduring guard, swordmaster's guard, yada yada yada. But those should be easy now that you hopefully understand how the main abilities of a sword work. Prioritize what stats are important to you, and there you go. The last thing I want to mention, which is really small potatoes, is that in the masterwork department, you may or may not have noticed that every sword in your vault capable of being masterworked has an impact masterwork. That is because impact is the only perk you can get masterworked onto your sword. Therefore, if you have a sword roll that you really like, why not crank that master work all the way up. Not like you can get anything different on it anyway. And there you go, that is Swords 101. Congratulations, we made it to the end of this freaking video together. I believed in us. Now please take your diploma and go cut some people up. Preferably in PvE, but hey, if you're wild enough to sword in PvP, eh, 
You've earned my respect. Remember that my favorite perk combos for PvE boss destruction, Whirlwind Blade, and Relentless Strikes ideally together, but also Flash Counter. If you have at least one person on your fire team with Flash Counter, trust me, that's going to be awesome and you won't regret it. If you found today's video helpful, please click the like button, and if you really enjoyed it, maybe con a friend or two of yours into watching the whole thing, or better yet, maybe hit the subscribe button. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.